so happy we alive. Good evening and welcome to Louisville Late Night. This evening we're here on the <coughs> banks of the Ohio River and uh, we're having a little get together and uh, we're just really happy to have with us an, an old friend and a, uh, I would say kind of like the, uh, the uh, spice, the spice and the soup, the spice and the soup of Louisville. Uh, an individual who's uh, lived a unique life and uh, a life that's based on uh, a philosophy of life that uh, he is living and uh, telling others about. Um, like a number of years ago, uh, there was a thing called, you know, the 60s and there was a, uh, a, a difference in uh, perspective on uh, just the you know the breadth and expanse of life and and part of the the uh, philosophy back then was that um, uh, people were on earth to uh, to grow and to uh, experience and to uh, share the world and uh, and anyway uh, this individual uh, is going to uh, it very shortly uh, describe to you some of the uh, gist of uh, that whole perspective. Anyway, I'm talking about our friend Michael Kessler. Michael, uh, welcome to Louisville Late Night. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. And uh, Michael, uh, Michael, maybe you could give us a brief a brief account of your life, like, uh, you know, where you grew up and... and uh, well, I was born and raised in Louisville. Uh -huh. out in the south end near Iroquois Park uh -huh. and uh, graduated from the University of Louisville twice. Really? Got my, got my bachelor's and master's there. In, in well, my bachelor's is in German, uh -huh. with a minor in history, uh -huh. and then uh, I majored in humanities with an area specification in German. Um, and right after that, I taught, taught uh, high school for 12 years. Uh -huh. And it was in that experience that... Wh where were you teaching? Oh, well, let's see. I started off in an old co uh, Catholic school called Bishop David. It's, uh -huh. called, it's called Holy Cross now. Uh -huh. And then I went back and got my master's and left there, and I taught at, uh, with, it was then Shawnee Junior High for a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to uh, Central High School mm -hmm. and taught there for about six years. Oh, wow. And it was in that experience that this whole work uh, developed, is that um, I was, had taught for 12 years, and I was pretty much coming to an end. I wanted to try something different. Uh -huh. And um, so at that time, I started this group, Kessler's Friends, and uh -huh. I started getting into seeing just how powerful music can affect people. Uh-huh. And then uh, my last year of teaching, I taught a course based upon Alvin Toffler's Future Shock. And uh -huh. uh, out of that, I started learning a lot of different um, uh, things were going on, some of the perils we're facing, but also some of the opportunities we're facing. Uh -huh. So uh, I decided in uh, 77 to uh, leave uh, classroom teaching and take off and follow a music career, which took me to Nashville for six months. I uh, found out very quickly I did not write country music. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so I decided to come back to Louisville and uh, use this as my base. And um, so there's a, a lady who lived near Nashville, an excellent songwriter, uh, Lana Chapel, got me started in the, my music career, really. And uh, she turned me on to the habit of uh, having people autograph my guitar. Uh -huh. And so that um, uh, she used to date Christofferson, and she said that um, he had people who made it in music to autograph his guitar. And uh, so um, I decided to have people who influenced me to autograph mine. Uh -huh. And so I've got <clears throat> a number of people that you don't know, family and, well, you know, Misha, people like that, you know, that uh, on there. But the first uh, established personality I met was uh, Harry Chapin. And so I've met him five times through the uh, years and talked to him about different things. Uh -huh. And um, uh, one of them was uh, Muhammad Ali. And uh, that was a, uh, <laughs> that was really an experience. I, um, <clears throat> met him in Chicago and um, so that uh, guy told me his traveling uh, liaison told me to go knock on his hotel room door eight o'clock in the morning and uh, so he opens the door a huge human being <laughs> I mean he's large mm -hmm. and so he was still combing his hair it was still wet from the shower I mean he was all dressed but 
we went in, he autographed my guitar, um, and uh, he asked me how I was doing for money. See, I was in the, kind of my real indigent uh, musician days then. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he uh, said, well, <clears throat> he wrote out a big uh, wad of $100 bills and said, here, you know, gave me one of them. And uh, he said, well, I don't want to run short. Now, this thing must have been two inches in diameter. <laughs> and so, like, uh, he peeled off another one. We went to breakfast. And he started, I told him one of the people I wanted to meet was uh, Chris Christopherson because he was the uh, friend of this lady who got me started in music. And um, he said, oh, it's calling. Mm -hmm. uh, and he got on the phone, he was getting ready to call L.A. And it was like 8 o'clock in the morning. I said, Muhammad, it's, it's like 5 o'clock in L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, stupidly I said that because he hung up the phone. <laughs> And decided not to uh, not to call him, but we went to breakfast, and uh, he took me to um, uh, breakfast, and uh, started introducing me as Christopherson, and uh, he was a great jokester, and uh, I wound up uh, leading a horse in a parade. It was a World Patriotism Parade, and uh, so that um, I was leading the horse that had his son on it, and I was carrying my guitar, and it was getting heavy, and so these guys said, "Well, there's the American Indian Center van right behind us. Why don't you go put it in there?" And I did, and so at the end of the parade, I'm standing in Grant Park with this horse. I had no idea where it was supposed to go, and look up, and there goes that van off in Chicago with my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent the whole next day tracking it down. I was supposed to go to Detroit and perform for the uh, Muslim anniversary, but um, I had to stay and <clears throat> get on my guitar. <clears throat> so at any rate, the, um, the years have had me meet a number of people like that, and, uh, and I've been traveling through the United States and uh, in Europe and uh, this summer I just went to Australia and New Zealand. So that's basically what I'm doing with right now is uh, you know just traveling and getting different formats or different ways of trying to get this information that I'm working on out in front of people so that we can really do some dynamic things here like you're talking about uh, us being here to uh, develop ourselves rather than struggling for green pieces of paper with dead president's pictures on it. You know, it's like, uh, you know, life is supposed to be more than that, you see. And you're right, that's why we're born here. You know, I, you know people like Jesus is right. He said, look at the kids, they'll show you what life's all about. In January 1776, Thomas Paine published his essay, Common Sense. Three out of four of the adults in the American colonies read the essay, and it changed their thinking from being citizens of a colony to becoming citizens of a constitutional nation. Common Sense, too, explores the opportunities of creating a constitutional, global nation. It is a documentary-style film of a fictional concert with high-tech presentation to bring to our planet the advantages of world citizenship. It is based on two simple ideas. The first is that there are times in history when new information is discovered that is so powerful that it changes reality itself. Our first reality was as hunters and gatherers. That lasted until we learned how to grow food and tame animals. At that point, the reality of the Stone Age ended, and a new reality began, the age of agriculture. Then people learned to make machines that ended the age of agriculture and began our present reality, the age of industrialism. Mm -hmm. 